Southwest Airlines is the leading low-cost carrier in the world in terms of sales, and it dominates the low-cost carrier space in its home market of the United States. In the U.S., it remains virtually the only airline that hasn't implemented some kind of unbundling policy. For example, it still has a bags fly free policy in which uh, passengers can check two bags for free with the price of a ticket. Yet even as Southwest sales continue to grow in 2018, challenges started to mount for the airline. With US-based scheduled airlines introducing low basic economy fares on many of their domestic flights, and with competition intensifying from US-focused ultra low cost carriers, Southwest can no longer reliably offer the lowest fares on many of its domestic routes, denying it what had historically been its greatest competitive advantage. Adding to Southwest's woes are its high labor costs, as well as the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration's decision to ground all Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft, and Southwest has more of those in its fleet than any other U.S. airline. Going forward, there are several steps Southwest could take to try to get its momentum back. For one, it could try to appeal to more business travelers. It could use its best-in-class loyalty program, Rapid Rewards, as a tool in support of this effort. However, it would probably also need to introduce at least a limited form of cabin segmentation on some of its flights to appeal to business travelers. Southwest may also need to amend its stance against working with travel intermediaries. Now, now this stance has been helpful to Southwest in the past in its core leisure travel business. However, it's been detrimental to Southwest in terms of expanding its appeal to corporate travel bookers, particularly those at small and medium-sized businesses. Going forward to increase its visibility to business travelers, Southwest may want to engage with more business-focused travel management companies. Now, Southwest could also capitalize on the expected growth in outbound air travel from the U.S. by adding more international destinations. Offering more medium-haul flights to leisure destinations in Latin America and the Caribbean are probably Southwest's best options for growth here. Additionally, though, Southwest should also consider entering into alliances with airlines focusing on the fast-growing Asia-Pacific region. Most importantly, however, Southwest must find a way to boost its ancillary revenues. To do so, it could consider introducing additional fees on services. But it's got to tread carefully here, since its stance against unbundling and, by extension, unnecessary fees is so central to the brand's identity. Going forward, if Southwest introduced some limited form of cabin segmentation or maybe up fees on services for which it already charges, that probably wouldn't put off its loyal customer base too much. However, it, if it decided to eliminate its popular bag fly free policy, that might be extremely dangerous.